The House has voted down expanded trade adjustment assistance, which was meant as a sweetener to get the votes to pass Trade Promotion Authority, which in turn should lead the way to the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal the president hopes to pass by the end of the year. President Obama did not go hat in hand to fellow Democrats and the evil Republicans seeking to have his Ballyhoo trade deal passed. Instead, he went with beer to a congressional softball game and begged. Remember that when it comes to this president and everything he does, it's all about the optics, my friend. That the optics and the verbalese commence for the Friday news call as we welcome back the duo of Carol Roth, CNBC contributor and New York Times bestselling author, joined by syndicated talker and columnist for The Washington Post and Baltimore Sun, Todd Schoenberger, I thank you both for joining us. A good Friday to you. And Carol, you get the first one out of the box. Here we go. The president loses. Humiliating defeat. Terrible, awful. My goodness, we're being buried right now in all the invectives. This really, though, is as bad as it sounds. A resounding defeat for this president. Well, it didn't start off well, Ed, because all of these bills started with the letters TP. So it didn't really have um, <laughs> a, a very good history in front of it. Thank you very much, Carol. First time in the show's history that somebody's actually in less than 30 seconds gone the TP route. Very nicely done. <laughs> I, like to, I like to cut right to the important part of this, Ed. You did. Uh, you know, I, I think that this was um, the, the most interesting part of this from a, a political strategy standpoint was the fact that the, the Democrats didn't back the president on this. Um, I think that that's uh, fairly amazing. But from my perspective, the fact that this was shot down is, is probably a good thing. And it's just kind of coming to realize that regardless of whether it's coming from the Democrats or the Republicans or the president, whoever is initiating it, it always ends up being a bad deal for the American people. So at this point, the less they do, the better it is for me. Todd, what this says to the president, though, is here's Nancy Pelosi, whom he personally lobbied until the last minute. She voted against it. She's been the president's stalwart all this time. So what does this then say about a shift with the Democrats towards their, their president from now until the end of his tenure? Right. Well, I think if anything, it tells you that he doesn't have the backing of the Democratic leadership right now. And that's the, the most amazing thing about him. I mean, Carol is right that the Democrats were not backing the president, but yet the Republicans were kind of filling in the gap there, saying, look, we will back you on this, almost knowing that it wasn't going to pass the House, so that they're actually looking in favor in the court of public opinion. Moving forward, though, you have to wonder, for the rest of the tenure that President Obama is in office, what else can he expect? What other roadblocks will he expect just from his own party? And that remains to be seen. Every, everyone's distancing themselves from the president on the Democratic side as they go into right. 2016. Not surprising at all. Well, let me ask you this, though, Carol. You hit on a, an interesting point here because there were a lot of Republicans that actually went, including John Boehner on the side of the president. Do you think there'll be any backlash to them from Republicans saying, wait a minute now, you got on, you got on the side of the president here and that's not going to make us happy? I think in this particular case, because of all the corporate implications, and that's the fact, those are the ones who are, are funding these guys, <laughs> there probably won't be a backlash. Um, in theory, in the por of court of public opinion, there might be, but given where their funding is coming from, I would imagine on this particular situation, you won't get that backlash. All right, let's talk about something interesting when it comes down to a court of public opinion. Here's a young lady, Rachel Dolezal. She is the head of the NAACP in Spokane, Washington. She has claimed to be African-American, apparently began referring to it back in 2007. Carol, she's white. She's not even close. Her parents turned her in. What do we have to think, though, about somebody who's, who wants to be seen as black to be involved here? Something's going on here. I, I think you should be able to identify in any way you want to. In fact, as a little kid, identified as a multi-billionaire and a baroness. And for the first time on this program, Ed, I am going to claim the stake to those. So if you could please, in the future, refer to me as a baroness and as a multi-billionaire, <laughs> I would really appreciate this. Look, it, it's kind of gotten to the point of insanity that everybody's claiming that they want to be part of this and they want to be part of this. The, the fact of the matter is we have to stop putting people into these stupid little boxes. It's all about their character and it's all about their action and i think it's time to do away well but with she the lied though carol call people people she lied she flat out lied she's been she's been living a lie since 2007 matter of fact here i, I gotta show this because here's and i promised a face palm for people who would see this quote here it is the question is not as easy as it seems there's a lot of complexities and i don't know that everyone would understand that here it is we're all from the african continent Todd. Look, if Elizabeth Warren can be Native American, why can she not be African American? I don't understand. It's that. a lie. 
<laughs> it's a lie. Todd, please back me up on this. Is this not a lie? Well, it's a lie, but was it a lie for her to get the job? I think that's the, the one question here because it good sounds question. like everything I've been reading is that she has done good work. So what was it, though, that got her into that role? Was it lying about her race, about her background? Because it sounds like, I mean, everything that she has done, she has done a good job. So at least the intent is there. But now what does the NAACP do now? Because they already publicly said it doesn't matter what your race is or what your gender is or, Thank you. or anything for that position. So what will they make? Will they make a move? But and you know I think something? that once the investigation's there. Here's the question, though, Todd. Done. You know, a lot of people are going to be asking that. If she was white, would she still get the job? Let's be very honest here there are people who are going to ask if that would have been the case no you the answer that. would be no no I think it's, that's it's, the bigger issue and it's brilliant it underscores the fact that none of this matters that we need to judge people on who they are we have to stop you know focusing on the gender and their ethnicity and all these other things at the end of the day it doesn't matter their work matters okay i only got a few minutes left we're going to rip through a couple of things here very quickly faith-based adoption agencies in michigan will be allowed to refuse to serve prospective parents who might be gay this a new adoption agency law carol i can hear people screaming now but some people saying that this is what they want I think if you're a faith-based adoption agency, you in, you're probably discriminating not just against people who are, are gay, but against other religions. I am of the opinion, let the free markets take hold. If you want to discriminate against somebody, you discriminate against somebody, and then somebody, if, if you want to adopt, you don't go to a faith-based uh, organization to adopt. You go to a different organization. I know a lot of people don't agree with that, but in my world, there are a lot of options out there. Just go somewhere else. All right, Todd, I'm going to bring to you now something else on another topic. Adolf Hitler's Watercolor paintings auctioned in Germany will fetch tens of thousands of dollars. Look, how despicable do you have to be before you stop being famous? I mean, why in the name of, I, honestly, I can't see why anybody would want to own anything by this vermin. I completely agree with that statement. And, and here's the thing. I mean, people probably want something with world history, and this is a way to have have a i guess some some type of artifact or whatever you want to call it i have to say though some of these paintings actually aren't that bad and, and that's the sad thing about it and this guy had a skill i'm not sure exactly where it went wrong for him but i think now, where it went wrong might have been from birth todd come on let's let's stop uh, i mean point, let's when, when we point. go right from here this is a guy who has no let, let's put talent aside a killer of millions there's no reason right. to have this one minute left here we go todd do to you for, no carol to you first in the new york post kyle smith says women are not capable of understanding good fellas carol just go ahead and admit it right now you're a woman you don't like good fellas you just don't get it okay <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't wait to see this author at my next Mensa <laughs> chapter meeting um, and understand not only why I don't understand Goodfellas, which is one of my top 10 favorite movies of all times, but perhaps why I don't understand hockey or football and I should be doing more scrapbooking. Well, because this it is, says women are the sensitivity police and you don't like guys being tough and they don't work and all they do is go out and be good obviously guys. Obviously, this guy does not get out much and doesn't know very <laughs> many women. It's one of my favorite, favorite <laughs> movies. Never rat your friends out and keep your mouth shut. And he did not keep his mouth shut. Good fellas rule number one what do you think todd 20 seconds i completely agree with that and actually it's all about loyalty but this guy kyle smith had it way off way wrong i'm not sure what angle he was trying to pull here but i gotta tell you something he's probably gonna be sleeping alone this weekend what am i what am i funny to you huh what do i do do i amuse you what sean burger roth what i amuse you how do i amuse you huh how how do i amuse you huh what's what is so funny about my show what is it Okay, there you go. I just had to do it. One pesky snap, and I feel so much better. There you go. Carol, thank you so much for standing up for the ladies of America with regard to, to good fellas. Todd <laughs> Schoenberger, always a pleasure. We'll see you guys again real soon. Thanks a lot. You bet. All right, coming up next, the war against Satan and a television show. Right here on the show that questions everything. I'm not funny, am I? Next on Midpoint.